Hello everyone. Today we decided to take a break because we need to uh, open the hive. So we are at the bee yard. Yep, gotta check on these bees. We've had some bad weather in here. Uh, right now it's only partial cloudy, no wind. So we're hoping the bees will be mellow. But uh, considering the weather we've been having, it's hard to tell, but uh, we'll, we'll know when we get in there. The goal is just to open the hives, do a little inspection, see how things are going. See, uh, you know, we're getting well into the swarm season, so we wanna see what they're doing. We're behind schedule. Because we've been building, we haven't had much time to get in and look at the bees, so uh, just something that needs to be done. Always something, so we're getting on it. So the first thing I notice on this one is there's not a whole lot of bees on the top. This early in the season, not really a, a big deal. But population is something you always wanna look at. Oh, when I get inside the hive, it's looking healthy from the top, meaning there's a lot of bees in there. So even though there weren't a lot of bees inside the top cover, that's okay. There's a lot of bees inside the hive. Did you find beetles? Yep, yeah. see a couple of beetles. One so far, just one beetle up in the lid. So that's not too bad, seen worse. Again, this early in the season, that's uh, not a big deal and not abnormal. Got just enough breeze to make the smoke blow away. Bees are starting to get a little bit curious. So we've got some beetle blasters in here from last season with diatomaceous earth and the good thing about the DE is it keeps working it's the gift that keeps on giving let's see if we can get a frame out of here So far the bees seem pretty calm, which that's a good thing. Like I say, they're a little bit curious what's going on. So we're gonna pull a frame out here and see what it looks like, what's on it. it feels pretty light, so I'm suspecting that it's pretty empty. On this side doesn't look, you're talking empty because no honey? So there's pollen in it. So I've got the bees upset now that I pulled the frame out of the hive. Now they're aware that I'm invading their hive and so they're giving me some buzzes and letting me know that, hey, what are you doing? Jerk, get out of our hive. <laughs> Pretty much this frame just has pollen in it. I don't see any nectar, I don't see any eggs. Pollen, lots of bees. But again, it's early in the season. 
the yow pond isn't blooming yet so that I'm aware of we don't really have any uh, nectar sources so not a surprise that we don't have any nectar in the hive hopefully we've still got some uh, honey resources in there left over from last year but they're definitely not uh, starving to death because just based solely on the number of bees I can tell that this hive is pretty healthy so far I don't see any little uh, indicators to tell me that there's huge problems with this hive. That's a good thing. When the hive is this full though, it's always a challenge to get these. I try to take the frames out just as gentle as I can because I don't want to smash bees. As soon as I start smashing bees, of course the, the dying bees release a alert pheromone that tells all the other bees that I smushed them. And that kind of makes them mad. I don't want to do that. Not to mention the fact that I just don't want to smush any bees to begin with. I like the bees, even if they don't always like me. Oh, wait, 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 Tur turn it, turn it. Here is a different one. Isn't this the queen? This is a different color. No, it's just covered in, so bee covered in pollen. Oh, okay. But the good news about this frame is it's full of uh, larva or... Uh, brood, you know, the sealed deals, and, and uh, I did see a, a drone on the other side as well, and this time of year you want to see some drones for sure, and drones, if you don't know, they're male bees, so all of the worker bees are females, life of a worker bee is approximately 45 days. The queen obviously is a female as well. She's the reproducing member of the uh, hive. And uh, she is the only one that can lay eggs to make more worker bees. A worker bee can lay eggs, but they're typically sterile and would only produce a drone. So if you look here, you can see this bee here, here's one here, here's one here. They're bigger, and those are drone bees. And that's really the difference be oh, I see. between the uh, oh, I see, I see, the I worker see. bees and the drones you, is the size. And well, is two of them. Now another unique thing about a drone bee, here's one, a good shot of one right there. You can see it's bigger, a lot bigger than all the other ones. The other unique thing about a drone bee is they do not have stingers. So, I like drones. They can't sting me. That's cool. <laughs> now, this is uh, overall a nice frame of brood. I don't see uh, any thing negative about that frame other than it does lack resources but I did see uh, the other frame had uh, pollen so if we evaluate the feed of bees bees typically eat uh, pollen and honey and so if we were to compare that to, to our feed uh, pollen equals protein so Obviously, pollen is plant-based, comes from 
trees and flowers and, and uh, they get it in a powder form they'll pack it up into their little bags on their hind legs and, and bring home that pollen in their uh, pollen sacks that's why when you typically see a honeybee out foraging and you'll see the bag full of pollen on their hind leg that's their pollen sacks where they collect that pollen and haul it back to the hive and uh, that is their source of protein and of course just like for us honey is sugar it's made from nectar and enzymes from the bees basically in their you could say their saliva but it's enzymes that are mixed multiple times with the nectar and that and then it's dehydrated a bit to reduce the moisture and that makes honey and that is uh, carbohydrates so if we look at this frame here uh, a few cool things about this so all along the bottom here you see these bigger cells and the bees are crawling on them of course making it hard to see but these cells are bigger so if we look here let me clear look at these ones are carrying up pollen so if we look at this this is what's called brood those are worker bees that are uh you know encapsulated in there to transform from larva into the worker bee and uh then here these bigger cells those are drone cells so Drone cells are bigger than worker bee cells. If I see any uh, queen cells, I'll definitely highlight that because it's possible that we could see some just because of the, the season right now as we're into the swarm season. So far, I don't see any evidence that this hive has swarmed. Typically, uh, the population when a hive swarms, the first swarm that leaves the hive, the original queen from the hive will leave with about, oh, up to 60% of the bees will leave with the queen. And uh, then they'll create a swarm and go find a new place to live. And then uh, she will have already uh, created other queens in the hive and either uh, one has already emerged and she will will mate and take over or uh, one is about to emerge and when she does she'll sometimes leave with another swarm depending on the population of the hive overall and sometimes she will uh, just take over the hive and kill any other queens that are born or still in their uh, cell have not been born yet she'll sting through the cell and kill them and then she'll be in charge from there on and, and take over that hive and that is actually the only way that bees can actually reproduce because when a queen reproduces by making worker bees you know all she's doing is sustaining the current hive she's not really uh, spreading growing more hives so in order to grow in more hives or a colony as it's called she has to actually produce another queen to take over uh, or to create another hive or a colony and uh, so that's what's happening right now with the swarms is that's bees way of reproducing so it's pretty cool really So far, uh, you know, my only concern for this hive is I'm not seeing any honey at all. Uh, but like I say, it's a very healthy hive, so they're obviously not starving. So I imagine there's honey in here somewhere. This is another good brood frame covered with brood this frame feels a lot heavier and typically when they feel heavier they're either very full uh, or they've got some honey in them I just don't see any honey in here but I do see some larvae that brood that hasn't been capped yet 
lots of bees. So overall, it's a good looking frame. There was some pollen on it as well. I mean, the perfect frames are going to be what's called a mixed frame, and that's going to consist of brood, honey, and pollen. And that's a good, good mixed frame. These frames are very full of brood, which means the queen is definitely doing her job, laying plenty of eggs. And uh, for this time of year, she's basically trying to you know make this hive explode with population because all the flowers and everything are starting to bloom and they want plenty of worker bees to go out as soon as the honey starts to flow of course they want plenty of bees available to uh, work that honey Another really cool thing about bees is, is, you know, like I said, the life cycle of a worker bee is approximately uh, 42 to 45 days. And uh, the amazing thing is they're, they have like a work schedule, you know, and the, the very first thing they do when they emerge from their cell, their first task, they go to work almost immediately. And their first task is to clean the cell that they emerged from. And for like the first couple of days, that's basically what they do in the hive is they, they're cleaning up and working in the hive like that. And after a few days, they might take their first flight and uh, they don't go very far. They just take flight to relieve themselves typically. And, uh, you know, as they go along, they have different tasks that they do. And the final task before or at the end of their life, maybe the last, uh, I don't know, I think it's like the last 10 days or something of their life is when they are foragers. And that's when they go out from the hive to forage for pollen. Sometimes uh, they may have the task to bring back water for the hive. They may have the task to go get pollen or nectar you know whatever but uh, that's their job at the end of their life so if for example they die while out foraging because maybe they get eaten by a bird or whatever maybe they get uh, in the water and drown or you know I mean lots of reasons they can die but that way they're dying at the end of their life and not at the beginning of their life. So most of their life has been used to contribute to the overall well-being of the colony. So that's just a really cool thing about bees, how they do that. And the good news is uh, these bees so far are being very gentle. Uh, I don't see any stingers in my gloves. I haven't, uh, they're flying around me, but they're not really buzzing me. So sometimes uh, bees give what I call a warning buzz. And so maybe you've been buzzed by a bee before. If a bee just flies by you, it'll typically fly by silently. You won't even hear it. But if they kind of charge you and they're making that loud buzzing noise, that's actually intentional. That's, they're giving you a warning, telling you you're too close, doing something they don't like, you know, whatever. It's just a warning. Starting to see some queen cups at the bottom of the frame here, but not seeing any queen cells. They're all empty so far. So the difference between a cup and a cell is a cup is just a, a wax structure that is ready to take an egg to become a queen versus a cell already has a queen in it.
hopefully the alpine blooms soon. I don't like to feed my hives any more than I have to. I try to minimize the amount of honey we take out of the hive. I try to leave them plenty of resources to overwinter. And of course, uh, in Texas, we have fairly mild winters. So, <clears throat> try to allow the, the hive to be as natural as possible and keep them healthy without feeding too much sugar water and things like that. Let them just uh, act like a natural hive. The only difference is they're they're in my boxes instead of in a tree or something like that. And uh, these hives were all native, captured uh, swarms that we caught here on the property. So we haven't purchased any queens or anything to change that. This is, these are native, basically feral honeybees. And uh, I hope that by doing that, we keep these hives, you know, strong for this area. I feel like if I change and, you know, do a mail order queen or whatever, that I'm basically changing the bloodline. And the thing about that is you never know what you're going to get and you never know how they're going to do in the area. And, you know, I've bought a lot of bees in the past and unfortunately I've purchased some bees that turned out to be pretty aggressive. And uh, I don't know what it is about me personally, but bees sometimes tend to not like me to begin with. I don't know if I just uh, have a smell about me or something that to them is, you know, replicates some kind of pheromone or something like that. There ain't no telling. But uh, I've had a lot of bees that tend to turn aggressive towards me. They're not doing it today and that's good. I'm grateful for that. We uh, said a little prayer before we began. I'll thank God for the blessing of calm bees today. But overall, I mean, this hive looks very good. Except no honey. No, it's... <laughs> early in the season. The only uh, concern about them not having honey is, uh, you know, I gotta wonder if they're completely out, and if they're completely out, then uh, you never like that to happen. They did have a lot of honey uh, going into winter, so I'm surprised that I'm not finding because they had, I don't know, most of these frames on this top end seemed like they were full of honey going into winter. I mean, is it possible that it's in the uh, bottom box? That is very possible. And sometimes the bees will do that, that they will move the honey within a box for whatever reason. They just want it somewhere else and they move it from the top into the bottom. Whatever. Really good looking frame of pollen, tons of pollen. And uh, seeing some, eh, just pollen, I guess. It's kind of hard to tell, but it looks like just pollen. So, I mean, they may be primarily just eating pollen right now. I don't know. So I got a few bees now that are giving me a little buzz. Yelling at me. Not too bad though, overall they're still real, real calm. So, you know, lots of orange pollen I noticed, orange and yellow. 
So, of course, on the trees right now, we know we've got the, oak the oaks are. and the pines seem mm -hmm. to be putting off some pollen. Mm -hmm. We're at that point where, you know, after the rain, we see pollen stripes around the mud puddles because there's so much pollen in the air. So maybe they're living on protein, I don't know. We'll see when we get into this bottom box. Overall, I mean, I'm taking my time and looking at every frame. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Since I haven't looked at this one since last season, that's why I'm probably taking a little extra time, checking a little more thoroughly. So now he's moving to the other hive and this hive he uh, didn't find any honey but plenty of pollen and then he put an extra box because it has honey in it, enough food for them to eat. And let's see about this one, hopefully we got some. So this hive is uh, glued plenty shut with uh, what's called propolis kind of a sticky glue putty if you look at all this they make it don't know what all they make it from but it's all from nature and uh, some people even harvest it I don't know what all they do with it because it's never, even here right right here yep never been into propolis but uh, like I say some people do harvest it and do something with it I don't know if there's nutritional value or shoot they might use the glue to glue their house together or something i have no idea <laughs> maybe it's a good hair product even i don't know <laughs> pretty sticky stuff wow these bees are super calm so this hive isn't quite as full as the other hive that's not really a surprise the other hive's about a year older they were both uh swarms like i said all of our hives here on the property are from swarms we decided not to put swarms traps out this year not because we don't want more bees but just because we don't have time uh, we're focusing on building so we're going to keep doing that and uh, we're going to skip harvesting bees this year i guess okay and now you're making it. them mad and this hive's going to be a little bit uh, matter than the other one. Oh yes so the first thing i noticed about this hive is we've got a lot of empty frames in the top the other one the top was full the bottom was about half full this one the top appears three quarters full lots of uh what I'm gonna call new wax. That's a good thing, that's a good sign. So, new wax, you can tell by the color. The older wax uh, gets darker in color. The new wax is, uh, when it's at its newest point, it's practically white. Maybe just a little bit of off-white. I'll show you some here in a second. I've got a real good looking frame here I'm gonna pull out. I see some drone eggs or cells on it I see a lot of brood so if you look at this look up in that corner you see how that uh, those cells the wax is practically white just a little bit yellow and if you look close it's full of honey right there so either that's honey left over or but the fact that it's not capped suggests that it's new which means they found a pollen source or a uh i mean a nectar source early on and i see some other cells with a little bit of nectar in them so that's the good news this hive has found a nectar source and they are starting to bring in some some nectar already so that's awesome now you look at this side and you see it's covered in uh brood and around the corners you see uh 
some drone cells down there on the bottom a bunch of drone cells in that corner so they're beginning to cap some of this larva it's not all capped yet you can see a few there's yeah larva i see larva in there as well uh yeah real young larva i see larva that's like a day old which means a day ago it was an egg so oh i see the the white the white the dot yep the those are dot. those are larva in there and yeah there's small itty bitty ones that uh, have just hatched from the egg to become the larva so they start out an egg and then they become larva and then the larva uh what they call pupates into a worker bee or a drone whatever it was set to be so this hive also plenty of bees looks real healthy and like I say, the one good thing that I saw right off was the uh, honey, which is fresh pollen, or uh, not pollen, nectar. Here's another good one. I see some eggs. I see some larvae. Pretty much all stages there. And, honey. and some I see brood. Some honey too. Oh, yeah. I see some, some nectar in there. Yeah. So, yeah, this one's full of real young larva so the good news is again the queen is doing her job worker bees seem to be bringing in food which is awesome really happy to see that nectar in there this early in the season and to see that it's fresh that's even better because that means that uh, they've found a source already. The other hive apparently has not found it yet, but they'll find it. Others will emerge. Like I say, right about now, any day now, if it's not already, the Yalpon will be blooming. That's a great early source of nectar. You'll find a lot of fresh nectar on this one. So yeah, you see those high, those cells just mm -hmm. glistening in there. So. This is a mixed frame, a little bit of everything in it. And these are uh, natural frames. There is no, uh, what do you call it? Uh, uh, my brain went blank. Basically the boards that go into the like they're raw. foundation. There's no foundation in there it's just an empty wood frame and the cells the bees build their their uh, comb into it naturally without having the foundation to guide them they do it on their own so again more natural I kind of use a mix I typically put some empty cells in there where they can build natural and then I put some uh, framed or foundation cells in there as well and you can see the cool thing about the natural you see the holes through there they've made tunnels where they can go right through the hive and make their own little paradise traveling system <laughs> <laughs> to commute about the hive <laughs> yeah this, this frame wow a lot of a lot of fresh nectar in here as well. That's awesome. Lots of brood, nectar, pollen. Loving it. This, uh, this hive gets the industrious award for the day. And this is the newest one. This is the right? newest one, yep. Well, the, the oh, newest well, one the, up here. This was the... Yeah, up uh, here, up here. Uh, which one was the Mother's Day hive? This is the Mother's Day hive. Or was this... This one. This one was the Mother's Day hive? Yes. So I'm pretty sure. The first hive was yeah, what? Yeah, the first, the, the brown, yes. This is the Mother's Day. Okay. And then the uh, 
One down below is the rain hive. Yes. So, remembering correctly. And overall, the bees look great as well. I, I haven't seen any uh, unhealthy bees. I'm not uh, seeing bees with mites. I'm not seeing bees with deformed wings or anything that would indicate a little bit of disease or mite problems. That's one good thing about some of these feral bees. They've evolved somehow and uh, they're what we call mite resistance, resistant. And so the uh, three primary pests, there are other diseases and things, but the three primary pests that all beekeepers will deal with are, of course, the small hive beetle. They're just a nuisance really, but they can take over a weak hive, a strong hive will keep them at bay. And then, uh, <laughs> ooh. yeah, that's the thing about the natural. Oh, they don't always tie it into the frame good. So if you flip it around, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. it'll it's just... swing a bit. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> anyway, uh, small hive beetle. Then of course, uh, the wax moth. The wax moth is another nuisance that when uh, you have a healthy hive, the bees will will keep the moths at bay as well. And then uh, the final and worst of the three is the Varroa mite. Varroa destructor, they call it. And uh, those mites attach themselves to the bees. Normally, uh, they'll go into the cells with young larvae as the cell is capped uh, they're inside the cell with them and so they spread disease to the bees and everything else and they themselves will multiply in those uh, cells so no good you definitely don't want those and there's lots of treatments for them I try to treat uh, the least amount necessary. Are you going to put the other box so, to this one? Uh, I don't know yet. So these bees, I have never treated. Uh, neither of these hives I have ever treated for Varroa mite. And the reason I've never treated them for Varroa is I haven't seen a Varroa problem. I just pulled uh, I put mite boards under these in the winter time to, uh, to pro provide a little more warmth or insulation. And uh, when I pull it out after the winter, my hives that I used to have in San Antonio, they were all commercial bees. And we had plenty of uh, problems with Varroa mites. I had to treat regularly. And, uh, oh shoot, that wasn't good. That always makes them mad when I do something like that. And you sure did. Oh boy. We'll chalk that up, Paul Murphy. Anyway, uh, yeah, they're mad now. That's how you make bees mad. Anyway, when you pull the mite board, you'll typically see mites on the board. And that's an indication that you have mites, first of all. And uh, the good news is I just pulled a board out of that other hive and I did not see a single mite on that board. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't mites and that there weren't some that I just didn't see. It's always possible. They're very small. But typically when you have a problem, there's enough of them that you see a few on the board, you know, at minimum. Uh, so the fact that I'm not seeing any mites on the boards and I'm not seeing any mites on the bees when I look close at bees, to me, those are all good indications that I don't have a mite problem. 
and of course I don't see any signs of disease or anything like that. So this uh, pie here, I'm not going to go through it completely. I've already made them pretty mad. What I'm going to do though is I want to look at the bottom of these other cells, or I mean these other frames, because what I'm looking for is uh, queen cells that are built on the bottom of the frames. So typically uh, queen cells, swarm cells are typically built at the bottom. And the good news is I don't see any evidence of that. So that's good. I don't see any evidence that these hives are getting ready to swarm. And that's mainly what I was checking for today. Also checking for their resources to see what they've got in the hive. This hive I am very happy with because they have pollen as well as nectar, fresh nectar. So that is just awesome. Try to set this box. Back down here. Get this hive put back together. What I'm doing here is just putting an entrance reducer in there. And I'll put this feeder back in to further reduce the entrance even though I'm not feeding. And that's just to uh, give them less area that they have to protect from bees that are trying to rob from them. And other pests. super on top of this one as well now this is a uh, a flow high pros and cons about them we've been using them since they were first uh, released I own four of them I do uh, there are some things I like about them and then there's some things I don't like about them not gonna covered all in this video this is a brand new one that's never been used so the thing about a brand new one that's never been used is sometimes it'll take the bees a while to take to it so there'll be bees in there but they won't be putting anything in it we'll see how that uh, goes sometimes you can uh, take measures to try to get them used to it like putting uh, coating it with wax spraying sugar water on it things like that I don't have time to deal with any of that stuff I just mainly want to give this hive some more space and room to make plenty of uh, honey should they choose and I'm hoping they will indeed choose to do so it's not all the way down. Yeah, it's because the knobs from that thing, this one isn't cut to fit the oh. flow frame, but okay. it's okay. And there it is. We're uh, essentially done with these two uh, hives. Let me 
don't think I want to fix it. I'm going to introduce her and change it to the next size up. While I'm here, that should make these bees very happy while I'm messing with them again. So if you look at an interest reducer, there's a small one inch space and then you turn it this way and you've got about a three or four inch space. Uh, during the winter and stuff, we use the smaller space, open it up during the honey flow. And since I saw nectar in the, uh, the other hive, we are going to declare that uh, the honey flow here has begun. So, Turn that to the bigger size. Give them more space to go in and out. Come on, get out of there. This one is a little bit thin. As always, folks, thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate you and appreciate you supporting our channel. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, smash that like button, leave a comment. All those things help us out uh, in the YouTube isvir, however you say it. Uh, that's how we help our channel. We'd appreciate your help and appreciate you sticking with us and seeing what we do next. Uh, we got some bees flying around us here saying goodbye as well so thanks as always god bless hasta luego amigos and we'll see you on the next one